Hello everyone, it's Dr. Campbell and welcome to another session on the ICD-10 CM guidelines. As you know, we are now looking at our chapter specific guidelines for section one. And so today we're going to focus on section 1C4, which is endocrine, nutritional, and metabolic diseases. Code range E00 through E89. So to begin, it's important to note that our diabetes codes are actually combination codes. You may recall me discussing combination codes when I covered section 1A and section 1B. These combination codes identify the type of diabetes, the body system that's actually affected, and any complications that the patient has that's affecting that particular body system. One thing to note about diabetes codes is that you may need to report more than one code in a code um, family, such as type one or type two diabetes, to identify all of the complications or manifestations that a patient has as a result of diabetes. Your diabetes codes are divided into five categories. First is E08, which is diabetes due to an underlying condition. This essentially means that the patient had another condition, which then subsequently resulted in them having diabetes. E09, drug or chemical induced diabetes. Here in this situation, the patient was taking a drug or chemical that resulted in diabetes. Then we have type 1 ETN, type 2, which is E11. Of note, Type 2 is also known as our default type of diabetes or situations when the type of diabetes is not specified. Lastly, we have E13, and that's for other specified diabetes. I highly recommend that you take a look at the alphabetical index to diseases, specifically under the main term of diabetes, to identify all of these different code families. Keep in mind, because diabetes codes are combination codes, you're gonna find that a code in category E10 or E11 has the same exact description. The only difference is one is type two and the other is type one. So, um, Number one, as it relates to the type of diabetes not documented, this is when this is in situations when the provider has not stated what type of diabetes the patient actually has. So this again is known as our default type of diabetes. All right. As you know, when patients have diabetes, they are either utilizing insulin, as in our type one diabetes, or they are taking an oral hypoglycemic, such as metformin. There are Z codes, that's in chapter one, or I'm sorry, chapter 21 of our ICD-10 CM manual tabular list that focuses on, and these are Z codes, that focus on long-term use of certain substances. And so, if the documentation in the medical record does indicate that the patient uses insulin, but it doesn't tell us what type of diabetes, yes, you're gonna be using type two because remember, type two is for non-insulin dependent diabetes or situations when the physician has not specified the type of diabetes. Of note, this code, this Z code, falls in the family of Z79. And if the patient is type one, you wouldn't use a code from Z79 because it states that the patient is already utilizing insulin because it's insulin dependent. 
Now, there is also a Z code for patients that are on oral hypoglycemics. And this particular code, again, is in Z79 category. Of note, if your patient has oral medications for their diabetes and insulin, and they're taking them long term, we're going to utilize the code for long term only. And this is when we're coding unspecified diabetes or type two. That's very important to note. Also, last thing about insulin and hypoglycemics. If a patient is in the hospital and is given insulin temporarily to bring their sugar under control, this is not long-term use. One example could be a patient that is admitted to the hospital for asthma. And one of the treatment that is used for asthma patient that's admitted are IV steroids. Well, sometimes the patient's sugar is elevated and the provider orders some insulin for them. This is just to bring their sugar back to a normal state. It does not indicate long-term use of insulin. Also, it doesn't indicate that they have diabetes as well. All right, next up, we're gonna look at complications due to an insulin pump malformation. All right, as it relates to the insulin pump malformation, you can see a situation where the patient has an underdose of insulin or an overdose of insulin. From a coding perspective, if the patient has this underdosing of insulin due to the pump failure, we are going to assign a code first listed as T85.6. This code is described as mechanical complications of this device. And then you're going to utilize an additional code, of course, for the type of diabetes that the patient has and any other manifestations. And then also, I, I should mention, after 285.6, you're also going to list T38.3X6, T38.3X6. This is a code that actually states underdosing. As it relates to overdosing, first listed code or principle is gonna be T85.6. And then here, you're gonna use a T38 code, but I want you to notice the difference in this code. This is T38.3 X1, and this is when the patient has poisoning as a result of either their insulin or their oral hypoglycemic, and this is unintentional. So one of the things that you should note, in a previous video, we spoke about um, the placeholder of X. Remember that? And remember we mentioned that in some code families, the X is already given for you, and this is a perfect example. All right, lastly, we're gonna look into secondary diabetes. So secondary diabetes codes fall into categories E08, E09, and E13. And these identify um, complications or manifestations associated with secondary diabetes. This is diabetes that's caused by another condition, such as the asthma example that I gave you earlier, or some other event. So there are two areas that we want to look at. Number one, use of insulin or oral hypoglycemic. Well, secondary diabetic patients may also utilize insulin or the oral medication. And in this particular case, we should be assigning a code from category Z79. Remember that code? And of course, if the patient has oral and insulin, default is going to be insulin. So insulin trumps oral. Also with secondary diabetes, uh, again, that rule about temporary insulin, situations where the insulin is given to bring the patient under control, that is not considered 
long-term use. All right, last two areas, sequencing and assigning secondary diabetes codes. And in the tabular list, there are actually some instructions for sequencing codes for families E08, E09, and E13. So the first situation is when the patient has a post pancreatectomy diabetes. And this is lack of insulin due to the surgical removal of all or part of the pancreas. In this particular situation, we're going to assign a code from category E89.1. Additionally, we are also going to assign a code from category E13. Remember earlier when we saw the five categories of diabetes? Well, this is a perfect example of when E13 comes into play. Also for this patient, lots of codes for this patient, we are going to assign a code Z90.41, and this is to illustrate that the patient has an acquired absence of the pancreas. Last guideline here. So secondary diabetes can also be related to drugs. When your patient has diabetes that's due to drugs, you want to refer to section 1C19 letter E and 1C20 as there are specific guidelines that you'll want to apply when you're coding an adverse effect and poisoning. And this is again because it's due to a drug. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.